I don't actually have an intro, oh, okay. but this is Dwayne. We're going to do a painful interview. Hello. How you feeling, bro? I'm so good and I'm so thankful. We're in Colorado Springs in a very beautiful room. I'm feeling good. I mean, <laughs> about to be in a lot of pain in a beautiful no. room. Turn <laughs> the room real quick. Get yeah, Benji. Dwayne, I'm surprised they didn't have a poster of you up here, bro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wish. You got the body for these fucking bro. Oh, my God. Bro. All right, Sweet let's man. get it. Here we go. First line. Okay. Oh, yeah, that feels real nice. Yep. Oh Lord Jesus! <laughs> I'm moving so much. Oh, I'm so sorry, bro. Hey, it's your tattoo. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, yeah, dude, let's just jump straight into the serious shit. Yeah. Um, I'm ready. What the fuck is your skincare routine, my guy? Oh my God, that's very sweet. Um, cocoa butter, Cetaphil, and then the human race, the Pharrell, the Pharrell, yeah, the uh. Mm -hmm. I can't even talk. Yes. No, you're doing great. Um, that's kind of it. That's nice. very nice. You have a beautiful skin too, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah, I just, I saw that we were going on tour with you, and I was like, God, I gotta step my game up. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, how's this tour felt so far, man? It's been really good. I was on the grandson tour, which was great. It was like awesome playing to crazy kids. It was the first tour that I played that people didn't know who I was in a few years, mm. which was really like awesome. And then it feels really good just to play your own tour and have people that are there for you, like no matter how many people it is. I just, that's like my best. It's the best feeling. Yeah. And it's nice to meet you guys and have you guys out here fucking killing it. Yeah, you got the sickest yeah. opener, so that's cool. We'll talk about it. Yes, sir. I mean, it seems like love is one of the biggest things that like consistent themes that i that i hear you talk about every night oh every night can you talk a little bit about how love affects how you write music how you interact with people like for you it seems like such a way of life it's such a way of life for me i think it's been a um, let me see that's a weird question no it's a great <laughs> it's a great question because i feel like love has such a crazy scope and it, I think it goes on like fucking infinity. And I think it's the most painful thing and the most joyful thing. And I was always kind of obsessed with love, but I think what I've learned about it is that it shows you a lot about yourself. And that's really important, just trying to like grow up and become a better person every day. So that's why I talk to the crowd about it every night on all these tours, because I'm just like, it affects you, you know. How about lyrically? Is that something that is in your mind while you're writing? Not in the past, but for this new record that's um, coming out soon or sometime in the near future. Has this been announced? Uh, no, no. Are you no. leaking it right now? I mean, I'm just <laughs> new demos and things that are going on now. Love is very prominent, and and it's I built like this story around love and. Yeah, man, it's, it's an influence the music so, so much. It's crazy. Uh, what's the process like in the studio? I usually go in with like a half-written song, and uh, me and my producer, Heiser, we just kind of vibe it out together. He'll pick up the bass, pick up the guitar, um, and we'll just go from there. And on his last record, it was more like coming in with, want to sound like the Cars, like want to sound like Devo, want to have synth leads, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, Heiser got all these fucking... Moogs and Junos, stuff that I saw the cars use, and we just like got all that, all that gear, and uh, yeah, just wrote to it, man. But super like poetic vibe. Yeah, I'll more have like some poem, some poetic shit, and then try to make melodies out of it. Walk me through how it how it actually starts. You said you walk in with like a little bit of a half idea. When you're actually by yourself, like what surrounding what kind of time of day? Is there anything like you know specific things in your songwriting process when you feel most inspired? Love, love a good waking up in the morning, get done running, get done meditating, and put on a Rick Ocasek interview, and just start writing my journal. Mm. That's it. So it starts freeform. Yeah. How does that uh, become, you know, a full song? What's the what's the steps between? Me and Robbie just fucking trying to get the best song out of it. Like the verse is always great. Like I've always been respectfully like a good verse writer and then he's like okay how can we have a like a banging hook then we record it it's it's like i don't know this album was like different man i feel like i just was trying to be a better singer so like the songs would take longer but it's pretty easy like as far as the words go mm. yeah it seems like you can hear your uh your influences pop through pretty nice oh my what God. uh what kind of what kind of shit you've been listening to right on this yeah so for for my favorite blue jeans it was definitely more still in that kind of ramones iggy pop like Putting a pop filter on that though, mm -hmm. and um, very happy with that album. Like 
stoked on that, but I'm super fucking happy with these new inspirations. Like, the new influences for the new record is just like way more 80s based. Oh, I nice. feel like I can't, right, I hear you. You know what I mean? Like, and I love, like, the, the, my favorite Blue Jeans was still like, you know, Lou Reed, Patti Smith, um, you know, like poet rockers in a way. You know? Yeah, yeah. But the new shit is way more like new wavy. Good. Who's biggest influence? For uh, stage presence stuff, because you're wild up there. Iggy Pop, Bowie, um, even Lou Reed, like in the 70s, I feel like w- once he got into his glam phase, like he was getting pretty sexy up there. Mm. Love Patty, how Patty Smith performs. Mm. And just like growing up in church, man, you see how gospel singers like really know how to get the crowd going. Like, if you can like get the crowd going for God, like not to be sus, but just like on some devotional shit. Like, I feel like that's all we're doing out there. It's, like, more like a devotional rock praise. I love that shit. Uh, what was your first CD? My first CD or you know, that I remember yeah. buying was J. Cole, Sideline Story. Oh, incredible. That was my, that was my first one. I, I tell people all the time, man, like, when I came to L.A. was when I, you know, heard songs for the first time. Like, my management showed me Bowie, showed me Arcade Fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I wasn't even, like, I want to make rock songs, but... I was just like, I want to write songs. Before that, I was very much hip hop artist. Yeah. So like buying Cole's album was just like, okay, cool. Like Lil Wayne, I was into all that shit as a kid, like our future. Um, but then I came to LA and I was just like, this music is way more speaking to my soul. You know what I mean? Just trying to figure out what the greats did that was so great. You know what I mean? Like I finally got into Bruce Springsteen, which I was so ashamed to tell my close homies about. It's like, what do you listen to? I'm just like, not like Born to Run, bro. It's like, no, nah, stop. I'm like, no, nah, for real. Have you heard it? And yeah, that's my vibe. <laughs> How long did that process take for you guys to finish your new record? Dude, we've been working on that our whole lives. Two years. Two years. <laughs> two years. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, versions of Nervous. Yeah, but there was so many. We, like, we rewrote the chorus right before we released it. Like, damn. We, we were like, we had the song, what we thought was wrapped, and. Our manager was like, I think the chorus isn't as good as it could be. Okay, and like we'll try it. We, we ended up going back in that. and fucking reworking it. And it feels like a lot of the songs, I mean, Branson on Beam Me Up, you wrote those verses probably four times. Yeah. How do you guys feel about, like, the outside perspective? If someone has a valid note that actually is not like, make this better, like, mm-hmm. it could do this or it could do that. Mm-hmm. I love that. But when a manager or whoever is just like, it's not as good as it could be. Or like, mm, I'm yeah. just like, well, tell me. You know I, feel I, mean? like, like, I feel like I feel like it can't shit. hurt to try. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. I think there's something really magical in the first thing that comes to you. Like when you're writing, the first melody that hits your head, yeah. that's what you expected to be 100%. for whatever reason. That's what your brain expected mm-hmm. on that part of the song. And I feel like there's something really intimate about uh, all of your past experiences adding together and your brain saying, this is what I want to hear right I now. That. And I think there's something so special about that Agreed. that changing a song too many times sometimes kind of feels a little sad or yeah. feels like you're like um, losing a little bit of the like initial special like spark the that's there, you know? Yeah, I feel you all the way on that shit. But that's why I was curious like uh, how often your songs get like reworked. Like are you, uh, are, is that like also a big process for you? Are there times where you redo a chorus multiple times or a verse multiple times? I think for me more so is like how did I deliver it? Ooh, it's I more your actual take. More the actual take like I'm, I'm always pretty there'll be stuff that people love or that I love and then it's like I know on the hook I can sing it a little better like even if people are not they're just like yo this is whatever it is when I know that I kind of left a little bit out I'll go in and do you ever it up. do you ever record by yourself <laughs> no not no so uh, your tracking is all with always with people. like I have to I have to work with the like you know how when you find your like your your people you know what I mean like it's so I can't work with any other producer man like this new record more people wanted to work with me and I was just like not that I'm comfortable but I know that me and him are going to push each other because we know where we're trying to go with it you know mm. what I'm saying and we know the sound and what's your favorite sport tennis dessert mm. cookies <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of cookies do you like bro at 7-Eleven they got these grandma cookies 149 mm-hmm. I get them mm-hmm. every time I'm familiar anytime mm-hmm. I leave the house I get it yep Anytime. Shows or movies? I'll say movies. Yeah. 
Man, I was going to ask a favorite movie. But I got one for you. The one yeah? Know. Yeah. Yep. Social Network. Great film. Great film. Great film. Aaron Sorkin. Crazy Rider. Trent Reznor on the soundtrack. What? Great film. Come on, man. Let's go. Fucking love Trent Reznor. If you weren't doing music, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, in service in some type of way. In service to something. Mm. Oh, no. This is in a very fast speed run. I'm sorry, bro. No, it's good. My blonde brain is going half speed today. Bro, that yeah. Denver show took it out of me last bro, night, I man. I feel you. And the set, too. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I gotta be so chill. I'm just like... <laughs> you, you haven't so even much. given me a single wince okay, or, like, good. flinch. It hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. But I don't want you to fuck it up. <laughs> I think we kind of got all the shit. Um, are there any other like little, little sound bits you wanna you wanna throw in there? Anything else you I want mean, me to cut I just in? Want, you guys just keep bobbing. We're fucking out of toy. They're great and they're amazing. They're actually great people and great artists. And um, yeah, man, just keep living. Come on. What a fucking <laughs> I love what that, a bro. sweetheart, dude. What a <laughs> fucking God. sweetheart. Man. You didn't want to plug anything else? <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna plug fucking Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights because I just got finished reading mm-hmm. it. I don't have nothing else to say. How did you think? Incredible. I love Great book. What? Great book. It's fucking amazing, dog. Say goddamn my text people. Come on. Have you read any of Rick Rubin's book? I just read it. That was the first book I read this year. Yeah? Yeah. I haven't finished it yet, but what, what are your thoughts? Oh, it was so many gems in there, but I would just say the way he, that he talked about how we create in every move that we make every day. Like, he was talking about, like, cleaning your room and like doing this like it all feels creative organizing and a room with like with what? your furniture like 100%. putting shit out yeah, like changing creativity. stuff cleaning stuff yeah man I just that part was crazy that part was so good also he, this is fucking amazing I also love this song so much <laughs> is it weird that I was tattooing you wearing your own face no I love it bro <laughs> it's a double double review I know I gotta get up now yeah. thank you so much bro <laughs> fuck yeah dude